One of the best lines of defense against the spread of COVID-19 is the face mask. Masks may help keep you from inhaling virus particles that are in the air, but more importantly, they keep virus particles from a sick person from going out into the environment and infecting others. So you know how important face masks are, but do you know how masks actually work? Today, we're gonna show you. A face mask is a physical barrier that stops particles from passing through by filtering the air. The air around you is made up of many molecules, some gently floating around and some flying across space. The size of these particles is measured in microns. There are one million microns in a meter, so they're too small to see with just your eyes. Larger particles, like grains of sand or clothing fibers, generally those bigger than 100 microns, are usually too heavy to stay in the air for long and will fall onto nearby surfaces. But smaller, lighter objects can hang in the air. Particles of all different sizes are airborne, from pollen to dust to viruses. When we breathe, we might also inhale or exhale these airborne particles. Some of them, like the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, can make us sick. So we want to prevent the harmful particulates from getting into the air and into our bodies. One great way to do this is by wearing a face mask. Essentially, masks filter particles from the air by trapping them in the fibers that make up the mask material. All face coverings, no matter what material they're made of, will filter some particles out of the air that passes through it. Once a particle comes into contact with the filter fiber, it becomes stuck due to something called van der Waals attraction, a weak electrical force that attracts electrically neutral molecules to each other. Van der Waals attraction happens because even though a molecule might not have an electrical charge, Parts of it may have a more positive or more negative area. This is called polarity. For example, a water molecule, H2O, is made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen atom. The electron in the hydrogen atom bonds with the oxygen atom, leaving the hydrogen side of the water molecule a bit more positively charged and the oxygen side a bit more negatively charged. So water is a polar molecule. Like a magnet, positive charges will be attracted to negative charges. The fibers of a mask, which are made of long, complicated polymers, will have areas that are polar. And for the most part, anything a mask is trying to filter will also have this polarity. So as the particles come into contact with the mask fibers, the van der Waals forces will pull the two closer. Van der Waals isn't a strong force, but combined with the forces of friction, the particulate becomes trapped in the rough fibers and is prevented from flowing through the mask. The other method that a mask can use to filter particulates is through electrostatic attraction. In electrostatic attraction, an electrocharged material added to the fibers attracts oppositely charged particles, which stick to them. You'd need a specialty mask to be able to filter using electrostatic attraction, such as an N95 mask. It's called an N95 because it can filter 95% of airborne particles. It's made with several layers and is specially treated so that it can use static electricity to capture particles. But in order for an N95 mask to be effective, the user has to be properly fitted. At the hospital, workers have a rigorous fit test every single year and are checked for the right size and taught how to correctly wear an N95 mask. Because N95 masks are in short supply, they should be reserved for frontline workers who come into close contact with patients infected not just with COVID-19, but other infectious diseases as well. If you're worried that your mask isn't effective enough, remember, there are two purposes of masks, keeping particles from entering into the wearer and preventing particles from exiting into the environment. Keeping particles from reaching a mask wearer is really difficult. You need a respirator mask like an N95 and special training and fitting to correctly use it. But stopping the transmission of coronavirus at the source, in other words, exiting an infected person, is a lot easier. It can be done with surgical masks, regular cloth masks, and even bandanas. Keep in mind, a coronavirus particle is about 0.1 microns, but it can't survive just by itself. In the air, it's suspended in water droplets that measure around five to 10 microns. One study tested particles of around one micron and found that a cotton t-shirt was around 70% effective. Even a pillowcase blocked around 60% of particles. So one word of caution. Some masks you may have seen have a small one-way valve to allow exhaled air to pass through and make breathing easier. But this completely defeats the purpose of wearing a mask, 
The valve doesn't filter exhaled air and will allow coronavirus particles to escape into the surrounding environment, so the mask fails in its job of protecting those around you. A homemade cloth mask or bandana isn't perfect at blocking aerosols, but it is effective in minimizing how much virus is spread. Think of it like covering your mouth when you cough or sneeze. By wearing something over your mouth and nose, you can help reduce the amount of virus particles that enter the environment and potentially infect someone. So using a face mask is a matter of public health. By wearing a mask, you're not just protecting yourself, but you're showing you care for your community, neighbors, friends, and family. So stay safe and keep wearing those masks, everyone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.